Hello everybody, welcome back. In this video we're gonna talk about, so we ended up right here in the profiler. Now what we're gonna talk about, we're gonna skip sequencing because we talked about that timeline already. Check out those videos. And then audio mixer as well, we talked about that. So I'm gonna go to the animation part and I'm gonna go to animator parameter. Now this is just gonna give me a list of the parameters I have on this object. So if I don't have any parameters, it won't show anything. So parameters for the animator or the animations is just a condition that you could put. So when you are coding or scripting this, you could, let's say you're just standing still and you're about to run. So what you could check is if the value of the player speed or of his movement is greater than zero, then you're gonna want to play a walking animation. If it's greater than let's say two or whatever, then you wanna play a running animation. And this is how you would pretty much do it. So you would just create one and then you would name it. So I would put like speed and then this would be the name of the parameter and I could use that in code and in script. Now the code script part, we're gonna do that in a separate video just cause this by itself is gonna be a long video, but we'll make two parts. So we're just gonna to go to the animation, go to animator. And if we go over here to parameters, we could see that parameter we had just created. So this window is just handy to have, I guess, so you could go through all your game objects and see what exact parameters each game object has. So we're gonna start with layers. Layers, this is the base layer. So the base layer just means that this is the base of the whole animation. So you could see that you could actually add a mask to it. A mask allows for an animation to play only certain parts of the animation. So let's say you have someone waving, so only the hand will be need to be used at that moment. So you could make an avatar mask doing that. And I'll show you that right now. Now there's also blending, so you could do override or additive depending on what you want. And I'll show you what all this is in a second once we start doing the avatar mask. So for now, what we're gonna do is we're actually going to probably dock this over here. And I did download animations from the Unity Asset Store and it's by Kevin Iglesias and it's called Villager Animations Free. And I'll leave that link down below. So let's just go back and go to the animations. Now I already picked one, the one that I wanted and it's just an idle animation. So all you gotta do is just drag it in and it automatically connects it to the entry. As soon as it starts, it's gonna play this animation. So if we hit play, we'll see the animation going on and we'll also see it actually playing down here. See it playing. Once that's set, you could also add, let's say another animation. So let's add farm work. So let's add this and we could make a transition. So to make transition, just as it implies, it makes a transition from one animation to another. Right here where this line is, you would have to click on it and under conditions, you would have to add a condition. If you don't add a condition and you just have exit time checked, what will happen is that it will play this animation and as soon as this animation's done, it'll go to the next animation. So let's see if we could see this happen. So it's playing that animation, it stopped, and it went straight to the next animation. And it just keeps playing that one over and over. If we add a condition, and if we say the speed has to be greater than zero, now we hit play. Now, as soon as this animation is done, it shouldn't jump over to the next. So as you can see, it don't, unless this parameter is changed through code, and it's changed to be greater than zero. So Let's say I put 0.5, now hit enter. Now you can see the animation changed. If it goes back to zero, it doesn't do anything because we have to actually make a transition back. So the way we would do that is if we hit, so let's actually put this to 0.5, we would make a transition. And anything you do in the animator while in play mode or pause mode or whatever, it will still apply. So I'll show you in a second, everything we do, as soon as I hit play, it's gonna still be there. At least it should, if I remember correctly. So if I hit play, or the plus button, and now if it is less than, let's say 0.1, it's gonna transition back to idle. So we'll have this at 0.5. Oh, it's at zero. So now we'll put this at 0.5. And it goes to that transition. If we put it back to zero, it goes back to the idle transition. So this would all be through code. This is just something you could see real easy. And then auto live link, just that's what allows you to do the changes while in play mode. So now if I hit play, as you can see, all my changes were kept. Now if I had auto live link 
enabled then you wouldn't be able to do that and I think you wouldn't be able to see the actual animations so I know you would be but I think you wouldn't be able to change it so now let's go back to layers actually let's go back completely so let's go to layers now we could add a new layer so let's say this is our upper layer so upper body layer now we have two layers and this one like I said we could add settings and we could add weight and also blending it could be override or additive so additive just means this animation pretty much will play on top of the base layer and override means that you would have to override it with this weight to do it you could also sync it and then I keep IK pass which I'm not sure exactly what this does but you guys could check it out and then so you have to make an avatar mask so we would go to create go to avatar mask this is our new avatar mask just leave it like that and we would have to actually this is our humanoid and our transform so you could use the skeleton from what avatar so this is the avatar I'm using it's called universal character avatar if you guys don't know which ones you guys are using all you guys would have to do is go to your your character and check the avatar here so I'm using the universal character avatar. so now with that you could actually click what areas you want to be affected or not. So let's say I just want this hand to be affected. That's all I would do. And then you could also turn off the IKs for it. So if you have any IKs, you could change, turn that off. But yeah, we just, let's say we just want the arm. I could get it right, could leave it IK. And then we'll just set it. And that's pretty much it. So now we would just add this, add this up. Not just click on this dot. Put the avatar mask you have and now you have this white thing so now you have two graphs so there's there's this base graph and there's also the upper body layer so when we start we don't want this to have any pretty much clip so we'll just have it to the new state and then we will add another clip real quick so let's go to new animations and if you guys have any questions always remember you guys could leave a comment down below if i do take a while I do apologize, but I will get to you guys as soon as I can. It's just sometimes, you know, life can be very busy. But anyways, so you would just do that and then you would, you know, make a transition depending on what you wanted. But actually, we're just going to make a transition from the entry to, to that one. But so you could also, when you right click, you could also, besides make transition, you could say it as layer default state. So this will be the default state. So as you see, this is the first one that when it enters, you could also copy an animation and you could create a new blend tree in state. And I'll show you what the blend tree is in a second. And then you could also delete. So now with this villager and everything set, let's put this down here and hit play. Now, as you can see, it's playing this animation, but it's just actually playing the idle. If I add weight to it, now you can see this other animation playing. And this other animation, it was um, like a mining animation. See, it's pickaxe mining. So it's not using the entire body. Now, if I do add it to additive, as soon as I switch it, oh, actually, it don't happen because I have the avatar mask. So I don't know if you could change it while in play mode, but we're going to do it. So if I go to the avatar, I go to humanoid, and I start just add all these except for the leg, and we adjust the weight so now as you can see the whole body moves and everything on top of the idle animation so that's what the additive is i think it for the avatar mask i might forget a couple things here and there but that's just because i'm trying to move as quick as possible so this video is not too long but yeah you could change the mask i mean that Add your avatar i don't think you really even need to use this because as soon as you put it on the animation it knows which character to pretty much grab so also if you click on the clip you could change the speed and the cycle offset you could enable foot ik if you double click on it this will pop out and then you could actually disable loop time or enable it now this animation thing it's inspector wind i'll show you uh later on what this was all about because this also takes a lot of things like you could add multiple clips like you could have a running forward running left and a running right clip and then you could actually adjust it. You could also have curves for your collider. So let's say you have a collider curve. And now when we actually, let's say we play this, this clip, you can see this little, this little um, timeline right here. And we could actually adjust these values depending on, let's say the animation. So as you can see, it adjusts right here. 
the values and then while we're in code we could actually adjust these we could we could set this value to equal a collider's height for example that way the height will extend and shrink let's say if a character is jumping and rolling doing like a jump roll it will make the collider smaller when it's when the character is tucked in but when he's actually untucked he his collider will extend again and here's the mask so you can add masks for your actual animations each certain animation there's events so you can have an event all this i'll show you guys in a later event, uh, video but you could add an event say so you add an event and let's say it's called footstep so this event will trigger when that pretty much footstep happens you would just add an object it could be any object it could be an audio source or something like that and when that when you want that event to happen that footstep event you just adjust it right there or you put it wherever you want so let's say well this guy's not walking but let's say he was walking and right here his foot was down then you would just set the event here and you would trigger a footstep but like i said i'll show you all this in a later video all these things that you could change but other than that i think i covered everything about the animator like i said if you guys want to know anything else that i forgot to mention let me know the scripting and coding part will will also be coming in a later video just wanted to cover this part first because this is the part that actually probably takes the longest and i didn't want to make this video too long well enough said this is probably it for the video thanks again for watching if you guys like this video or if you guys learned anything hit that like button if you guys want to continue to see more videos again like this don't forget to hit that subscribe button also hit that your bell icon if you want to get notified as soon as i post a video once again thank you guys